unlike other question types on the SAT, it's a bit hard to boil down doing math problems into a, a core strategy or a set number of steps, but we will at least attempt to give you a basic idea of the best practices about how you might tackle each math question. And the first thing, which I mentioned in the previous video, is you want to approach SAT math problems as brain teasers or puzzles. Right? You want to approach them like they're brain teasers or puzzles. Right? They're not just the math questions you've seen and done in your math classes in school so far. They're going to use a lot of the same problems and they may look like them, but they're going to be different in, in various ways. So approach them with that frame of mind that you have to solve a problem. Think about it in a different way, not just mimic or you know, repeat what you've done in your math classes. So the first step once you go to your math question is to read each question piece by piece. You don't want to do it in chunks. I mean, you want to do it in chunks. You don't want to try to read the entire thing and try to figure out what's going on in the entire thing. Good test takers, good math students naturally will understand that breaking down questions piece by piece is how you do it. Just understand each sentence, each part in itself, and then put them together. Don't try to swallow it whole because then you'll, you'll choke on it. Stop and write down, sketch out each piece of information. So as you're reading each question piece by piece, you're going to write down all the information and or sketch out the figures you need that, as they're given to you in the problem. So really write it down. Don't just sit there reading it and thinking. Get active. Use your pencil. Mark things down. Again, that's a big difference between a good test taker and a bad test taker. A bad test taker just sits there and reads it and does nothing. A good test taker, good test taker will at least try to write things down. Try to figure it out on paper, not just do it in his or her head. Circle what the problem is asking for. This is just a good tip if you have the tendency to, you know, let's say you're solving an algebra problem and you put down x equals, whereas the problem wanted 2x equals. Well, that's just a silly mistake. So one way to avoid that if you're having issues with this is actually circle what the problem is looking for so you remember what exactly you have to give as your final answer. Okay, now that you've done that, it's time to solve the problem. And in general, remember what I said before, you want to seek the 30-second solution. If you're working through a problem and the method you've come up with is really complicated and time consuming, you've likely not found the right way to do it. The right way to do these problems is going to be quick, direct, and re relatively elegant most of the time. It's not going to be, with a few exceptions, this bogged down computation, bogged down work. Um, so seek that solution, look for the trick, look for the, the secret, look for the shortcut, and you'll solve these problems quickly and accurately. If you get stuck, reread the question. This happens so much. Students read the question, they work it through, they don't know what to do. So I say, well, reread it. What information are you not including that we that was actually in the problem? And then when they reread it, they say, oh yeah, I forgot that you know this part was in it or this part. So reread the question. Sometimes that will jog your memory or give you some inspiration as to what you can do to solve the problem. A good tip for the math and for any section is to keep moving. So if there's a question that you don't know what to do, you're confused, you feel yourself getting bogged down, circle the question and return later. Don't spend a bunch of time on a number seven when you've got 13 questions or so to go, right? Just skip it, move on, come back later when you have the time. And then in general, if time permits, review your answers. You've got 25 minutes for each section. If you finish with five minutes to go, don't just sit there. Go back to questions that you were unsure about, go back to ones that you might have circled and come back to, go back to ones that you were, you know, want to review and review them, right? Spend time with them. Use each second you got to maximize your chances because this is especially important for the people who make silly mistakes. If you make silly mistakes, you want to make sure that you avoid that by really making sure you check your answers uh, to avoid those kind of errors. So that's the core strategy. In the next video, we're going to talk about some other general strategies that might apply to certain math problems uh, that should help you.